well if I am lighting the candles, that means I am putting the final touches on my holiday table. And I'm really quite pleased with how it turned out, particularly given its starting point, which some of you may recall was a really tacky thrift store find, a wreath that I deconstructed and I think really elevated it in an elegant way with the help of some spray paint, um, some, I think, very judicious composition, and I think just a little bit of, of creativity. So let's talk about how this table came together from the the very beginning to the very end, what some design inspiration um, muses were for me, and then also some really great design tips. So let's just decompose this table and see how it came together. A lot of you will remember the starting point of this gorgeous centerpiece, if I do say so myself. I think it's pretty gorgeous. What do you think, Stuart? I agree. Pretty elegant. It started out as a $3.50 wreath that we got at a local thrift store and I just took it apart and then I reassembled it but in not in terms of its wreath form but in a centerpiece form and by doing that um, I think it really upped the elegance ante of it. So I had a couple of cans of spray paint. I have talked about this before and at the end of the video we will put the links to the spray paint that I use and some of the different elements that um, were important in the construction of it. So the base of it is just a, a brass bowl form that I got on another thrift store trip. I just deconstructed the wreath and I took apart the various elements that appealed to me at the outset when I saw the wreath. And that was these beautiful patina, gourd patina gourds. There were a different, few different varieties of them. There were some gold tipped pine cones or brass tipped pine cones. And I just really loved the way it looked. So that what I, so then what I did was I took the frame that it was on and basically it was just a wire, a padded wire frame that had some floral tape on it and I spray painted it in a similar gold. Again, the links to the spray paint are in the video or in the description below. Now, because I wanted to fluff it out a little bit more, I spray painted some of uh, the tacky leaves that had glitter on them and were in a color that wasn't part of my vision. I spray painted those as well and then I just scattered them about so they would look as if they almost had been blown by the wind into the composition. And then because to me it's all about layering and textures, I got some Nandina berries from my own garden and I sprayed some of them in that same gold or brass colored paint, spray paint, but others I left in their original state so that the color would kind of come through and I just sprayed them with a clear enamel. There's some on this side and there's some on this side and I just tucked them in and about the composition as I had it constructed at that point in time. It works really well. It does work pretty well. <laughs> Stuart, do you recognize this okra that we oh, took yes, from Garden, Garden Design? I actually have a couple more that I need to sprinkle in here. And I love the way it picks up all of the different hues in the tablecloth, which I have, have shared with you also in the past, uh, the link to it, but we will once again, we will put that link. I think I got mine overnight, Stuart, so people still have time to replicate this look. So after I did that, then it was kind of an existential moment for me on if I wanted to keep it really simple or if I wanted the maximalist in me to come out. And so I just decided to go with abundance because Thanksgiving is all about abundance. And I wanted to pick up the orange hues 
And this was determined by what it looked like once I put the tablecloth down. So I wanted to pick up these really vibrant, almost fluorescent orange, hue, orange hues. And so only the orange real pumpkins, these little Jack B. Littles, did I put back in place. And I did give them just a little sheen of uh, just a clear gloss so it would capture the, the candlelight and would reflect um, just the, the, the ambient light overall. Now as a final touch, because it just didn't, it still wasn't as reminiscent of the garden as I wanted it to be, I bought these gorgeous cabbage roses at Trader Joe's. <laughs> they were $8.99 a bunch. Now here's a little tip, Stuart, that you may not this may surprise you. So these roses are actually in tiny little votive cups that I got off of Amazon oh, last year. You may recognize those because I used them in a Halloween oh, candle arrangement earlier. But I, the color of them is kind of amber, so it just, it, it just kind of goes away. You don't see them. And then just the beauty of the cabbage roses are at, really are at their peak. And I have had these roses in waiting to put into this composition for three days. So that's how long lasting they are. Again, I just got them at Trader Joe's. If they didn't have cabbage roses, you could use another, another flower, either from your garden or someone else's garden, but that picks up that orange and kind of apricot hue. And those were the two hues that I really was, was concentrating on. But then I also wanted to pick up on the golds. So I just went outside and foraged for some golden redwood leaves or redbud leaves. So then I just scattered some gold leaves in there because I wanted that natural, almost dried component to the entire arrangement. Now, I love, whoever made this comment, I absolutely loved it because even though I'm all about elegance and beauty and layered beauty, I am also about practicality. And one or two of you commented and said, but my goodness, this takes up so much table space. Isn't it an impediment? to your dining guests. And yes, it is. You know, as a rule, we know not to make flower arrangements on your table too high so that guests can see across the table to, um, to the other guests. Now this one isn't necessarily that high, but it is broad. So what I do is I set my table early so I can enjoy it for as long as possible. Not only myself, but if I have any guests that are coming in uh, between now and Thanksgiving, they can enjoy it also. But then after all of my guests arrive, while we are in that inevitable period where food is getting prepped, people are coming and going, but after everyone sees my gorgeous composition and they take pictures of it and I have documented it, then this is actually on a tray, on a wicker tray, and I remove the tray before we dine and I set it in the window so these elements largely come away and then there is room for all of us to put our plentiful bottles of wine, gravy, butter, all of those kinds of things. And at that point, it's more about just celebration than it is about creating an elegant atmosphere. And so I, whoever commented on that, please let me know because I just, it was so insightful of you and, and it is something that I probably would have failed to tell you otherwise. So yes, I do remove it before we eat, which might seem like a shame, but that's the value of putting it up, putting it in place and styling it well in advance. Well, you guys, we've got just a few more days before Thanksgiving, which gives me a little bit more time to stock up and resupply what I consider to be holiday essentials. 
Now I try to get dripless tapers because I love using taper candles in addition to just votive candles and anything that might come as self-contained um, a little box or a little canister or something like that. I like us using them and lighting them when I'm meditating in the morning. Uh, if it's just hubs and myself sitting in front of the fire, I will light them on the mantelpiece because I just love the quality and the kind of hygge environment that they create. So I order them online and as always, I will put links in the description below so you guys know where I get them. Now, when I say I get tapers, I get both real candles candles like this one but I also get battery operated tapers and you guys have seen these before I talked about them quite a bit last Christmas and I'll put the link to these also but I love them because you can you can use them and they they really do look like a candle and you can set it on different settings so that one will look more like a candle or, or off they do come with a remote to turn them on and off now something else that i like to have on hand and i've showed you this before is sometimes it will be less than straight and on center which drives me a little bit crazy so i use something just called stickum this is kind of like a, a waxy substance for your wax candles you put it at the base and and it helps secure it into the candle holder. These bobeshes, bobeshes, I'm not really sure how to pronounce them. I guess that's my first question of the day for this segment. If you know how to pronounce it, let me know. But these are just little glass kind of platforms that you put over the candle and it will then protect your candle holder from all of the drips and the mess that the candle makes. And it makes cleanup a little bit easier. If you have stocked up on your votive candles and you're just using them in standard cups, if you want to keep it from settling in at the bottoms, here is an easy solution. If you put a few drops of water at the base of your votive candle holder, then that makes it very easy to remove the votive stub and it will fall right out. You don't have to scrape away the wax or put it in the freezer or whatever. This works brilliantly. I find striking a match just I don't know, I just enjoy the sensation of striking a match. I get great pleasure out of it. See, I just, I just find, I'm not a pyromaniac, I promise you, but I just take pleasure in, I guess, the ritual of lighting a candle. It's all part of the experience itself. I buy fireplace matches, which I always like to have in stock. And you may ask, well, what about the strike pad? Well, if I've got them in a pretty container like this, then I just tape the strike pad to the bottom of the container and it is readily available to light my fire, Stu Stuart, to light my fire. Well, there's all of my candle and illumination essentials for the holidays, but I've got several kitchen essentials you might want to find out about. So make sure you stay tuned for the next segment. Well, the centerpiece pretty much dictated the rest of the table. And here's how that came together. So I am someone, and here's my question of the day. I am someone who has lots of table linens. I really love them. And more importantly, I really use them. Sometimes I use them right side up. Sometimes I even flip them and use them upside down to give me more variety. But in this case, because I'm introducing a little bit more blue into my home, I want wanted one that had some blue in it. And I found this one, I got it off of Amazon. It was not prohibitively expensive. And I loved it because it was just so autumnal and I thought it would just so beautifully showcase the centerpiece. I loved the jewel tone colors in it and I really wanted to emphasize that. So once I got my tablecloth in place, then I needed to decide on what kind of china, what kind of 
of flatware, what kind of, of uh, crystal I wanted to use. And here were a couple of different options that I struggled with. One I could go in a more elegant way and the other way is a little bit more rustic. Now, one thing I do know is that is the importance of at least one type of, of dishware, whether it's fine china or it's pottery, that you have a place setting of 12. And my wedding china is Christian Dior Malachite. I absolutely loved it when we selected it and I love it now. I have a number of different serving pieces and more importantly, I have a place setting of 12. Now, if I have more guests than 12, obviously I will have to use a different kind of, of plates and bowls to go along with it. But in this case, my options, those which I had a full place setting um, of 12 plates were this Malachite Christian Dior or I have just some basic more pottery types. I think these may have been threshold at Target one year. I can't remember, but I did buy 12 of these. And then I have just my everyday, my White Williams Sonoma that I use every day. Now, I could have used any of them. And in the past, I have used... Uh, depending on on what my how my table setting evolved, I have used all of them. Well, once I when I put down the plate by itself, I wasn't sure if I liked it. I thought it might look a little too busy, but then I just decided to play play up the jewel tones. I did love the way the gold rim on it, which also can read as brass, matched and replicated the brass and the gold of the centerpiece. Can you see that, Stuart? Oh, yeah. And then one of the reasons that I love my Oneida flatware is because it also has some gold on it. It's it's not just uh, stainless, but it also has some gold on it. So that way I can use disparate kind of elements and still there's a cohesion to them. So I then, uh, once I had my flatware in place and I had my china in place, all I had to do then was bring it together with some crystal. Now I, I have enough crystal of the water goblets uh, to set the entire table, but I only have so many wine glasses. So I used two different types, alternating them at the different place settings. At one, I have one type of wine glass and at the other, I have another. These glasses were a thrift store find. I, I think I got them at Goodwill for Easter one year. They have made a reappearance on my dining room table for Thanksgiving. So then I needed to decide on what kind of, of napkin linens I wanted to use. Well, here are a number of kitchen essentials that I always like to have on hand for the holidays. So starting with hot tea, I absolutely have to have different varieties, different flavors, different scents of hot tea available on hand at all times for anyone who might drop by and wants to sit in front of the fireplace with me and enjoy a cuppa. And this year, I just wanna tell you guys about one called Maple Espresso Hot Tea chocolate on hand pretty much at all times. Now, one of the reasons I do this, I don't, I don't really drink a lot of hot chocolate and neither does Hubs, but I'll tell you who does. And that's some of the workers that come and blow my leaves or that might be helping me outside. And I always like to have hot coffee, hot tea, and some kind of hot beverage for them. Recyclable, or actually these are even compostable, but they were made from recycled material. And these are hot beverage cups that they can take with them. So when they get back into their truck to head to a different house, I can give them a refill and they can take this along with them instead of those unwieldy mugs that I cart in and out. And then the next things are, are kind of like kitchen slash craft related. Things like clove studded oranges, clove studded lemons, and, and clementine. These are two things. I discovered these years ago and I use them every holiday. And that is both a lemon or a citrus zester and also a lemon or citrus stripper. So here's what you can do. And typically I am doing this on citrus fruit, but I don't have any right now. And that's that you can make these strips of citrus 
that you can then dry and use in your arrangements. What it also does is it makes these wonderful channels in your citrus. Again, this isn't as good an example, but I didn't have any fresh oranges. But it also makes it much easier to insert the cloves because you're not penetrating that thick rind on the outside of either your lemon or your orange, or in this case, your apple. And that makes it so much easier for kids. Now, in the absence of one of these strippers, you can also just take a fork and poke some holes into the fruit itself. And then in those holes, you can insert one of these little clove studs. So then I needed to decide on what kind of, of napkin linens I wanted to use. I always use cloth linens for Thanksgiving. I, I love the additional elegance and effort that it requires, and I think it makes my guests feel special. Um, and I, I went, I had a number of different ones to choose from because I have lots and lots of cloth napkins. So I could have gone with this deep russet color because it would have blended in well with the tablecloth. I also had kind of a butter yellow that I could have gone with, but the butter yellow to me read too springy and the russet to me read too rustic. So I decided to just go with more of a neutral and another reason that I really like these napkins is because they're extra large. And I got these I bought off of online, I think maybe Amazon, I'll try to put a link, but these are actually tea towel, Stuart. Yeah. Because, and so they're extra large, and I find now that in my napkins, I like them to be larger rather than smaller. The other reason that I like them is because I could fold them in such a way, and I am a big fan of different kinds of napkin folding, and one of the reasons I, I love this napkin fold is because I can tuck something into it. And I bought myself, because I adore dark chocolate, um, I bought myself some of this Uganda cho dark chocolate from Trader Joe's, and I was eating a piece of it. I set it down on the, on the table, and I thought, oh my gosh, it so perfectly echoes the colors of the tablecloth and the Malachite china, and it just gave another note of elegance and, and just an important touch of layering, I think, to really accentuate the colors that I selected, the jewel tones, which I really wanted to emphasize in a dramatic way. Plus, typically, I for Thanksgiving, I always like to have a little something that each guest can take, can take home with them. So in the past, uh, usually I make turkey cookies, which is kind of a maple shortbread. Um, it's an old Martha Stewart recipe, and I have used those, and I make individual cookies for each person. But this year, I wanted to do something a little bit different, and when I saw how beautifully these candy bars looked with my table setting and kind of the gold foil lettering on it, it's perfect, I think so. So, um, and I also happen to know that a number of my guests like dark chocolate as much as I. Now I needed to select my candlesticks and I selected brass because obviously brass was my metal muse for this composition. And I, I think I told you, Stuart, do you remember when I told you that hubs broke one of the hurricanes that I had for the, shand the uh, brass candlesticks that I are yeah. normally here? So I needed to replace them and I got these kind of more modern looking, a little bit more contemporary. I found these online, but here's a, t a tip. Um, I wanted them to be elevated and I wanted the bottom of the hurricane to be flush with the top of the candle holder. I didn't want them to nestle all the way down towards the base. So how this came together was 
this is called one of it's one of my essentials to have for the holidays. It's called a bobesh, and you use it to capture candle drippings so that the candle drippings and the melted wax don't get on your candle holder. But what I discovered was brilliantly, it was the same circumference as this hurricane. And you can get all of this online as the hurricane and it fits on it and it also elevates the hurricane so that the base of the hurricane is at the top of the candlestick, not at the bottom of the candlestick. The candles I also buy in bulk because I like to have candles just lit pretty much everywhere for the holidays and I also try to make sure that I have someone who is my designated candle person who both lights the candles and who is responsible for making sure that the candles are blown out before they leave and typically that's kind of one of the last guests that way I ensure that they're not a fire hazard of course I could also use some of the battery operated tapers that I like I like so much but in this case I've used I have used real candles and then because there's typically a crowd and because we are pretty tight this table easily seats six but it can comfortably seat eight but it does squish us together a little bit more so because of that I do have place cards based on based on the size or or how um, or how demure the guests are so that it it kind of takes care of being squeezed in so the tiny ladies typically sit in the middle and the bigger guys Stuart you've been here for this before you bigger guys typically sit in the ends where you've got a little bit more room so I take that into account itself now sometimes in the past I've had a larger group and when I have a larger group that will spill over into the kitchen and into the breakfast room table but this year it is a smaller number and so I don't have to worry about that now a lot of you have asked so how do I set it up is it a buffet is it do I put things on the sideboard I typically set up the buffet in the kitchen so people can fill their plates I bring the plates into the into the kitchen people can fill their plates after of course we've done all of the appropriate picture taking now I always make sure that I soften the butter in advance and that I have butter plates on the table and the importance of the crystal and any kind of cut glass that you have on the table is that it's another element that will sparkle and reflect light along with the candlelight and that I think is crucial to the design of putting together an effective tablescape by the way I think these I got these for a wedding gift and I think it makes one of the nicest wedding gifts ever is a little bit of fancier salt and pepper shakers that are cut glass that you can put on either end of the table so I think that's it um, there are other things that you want to remember about Thanksgiving on my checklist is always to make sure that I have Miracle Whip that I have white Wonder Bread that I have iceberg lettuce for the indispensable turkey sandwiches the second day Stuart absolutely so the only thing that I have not included I guess is just a very deep and abiding sense of gratitude for how fortunate I am to have Stuart in my life to have the whole LV team to have all of you uh, followers as part of my extended family and of course my direct family as well so from my house to yours happy Thanksgiving and let me know how your table comes together well I hope you really enjoyed this Thanksgiving episode and if you did then make sure to check out last Sunday's episode because you might find it pretty compelling as well